Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the 20th rundown episode. I know. Wild, right? Wow. Um, We're almost half a year. Almost half a year. We are. It's uh, Once we hit the 25 mark, we will... It'll be, uh, I'd say, uh, once we hit to the 50th episode, I'd say that should probably be season one. <laughs> fair. Very fair. That or, tw or the, the, you know, yeah, just because, like, that's a whole year. But um, we have a few things today. We're going to start with, like, the political shit for, like, the next 15, 20 minutes. Specifically, Biden dropping out and so in the shit with Tenacious D. Then we're, then we're getting... And then we're getting, and then at the 20 minute mark, we're going to start talking about normal shit. So you feel free to skip ahead if you don't want us to listen to that. If you do, uh, stick around. So let's start with the elephant in the room. Biden stepping down. It was announced at 9 p.m. This is a good thing. We are in agreement with this. There is no debate needed to be had. Um, I think me and Evan, to take it even further, agree that Trump is a genuine enough threat that regardless of experience, or age in a particular field, a new face was just needed. <laughs> I think that Kamala, while I, while I do have a lot of criticisms of Kamala Harris's policies and politics, specifically she's a cop, for one thing, um, I will say, though, uh, it will be fun to start writing all of them, seeing all these think pieces written about Donald Trump, about how he's too old, about how his gaffes are too much, and how he should be the president. And the thing is, is that Trump has too much of an ego. Don't get me wrong. Biden absolutely had enough of an ego, but he was also like, you know, not a bad president. So I think Trump will very much uh, end up. Um, <laughs> I think I think Trump will be very mad by those thing pieces. Hell, I'll write a thing piece like that. I'll post it on my fucking media. Fun fact before we get back, before we continue on this, I actually started releasing the show notes on um, our, on uh, my Medium page. So if you want okay. to go listen to that for folks as well, that's there too, for the rundown. Yeah, please there, do. At least. Um, uh, yeah, I just want to say very quick, I hope, back to the uh, Karma versus Trump now, I just hope that people's dissatisfaction with Karma doesn't, you know, eclipse the dissatisfaction slash hatred they have for a Trump-esque figure. I'm just, I don't know. I'm very anxious to see what the election of results are going to, going to be. Now, I'm excited to see the debate. We're actually going to have a debate where they debate points. Yeah. Finally. And, 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 and I'll give Kamala credit. She's a sassy bitch. So she's going to like fucking... She'll, she'll, it's gonna be good. There, there is, there is nothing more entertaining than watching a black woman bully an old racist man. Exactly, and for that, I'll be here for it. And I really hope that you know the points of politics. When we get back to that because it's well. I mean, thing, I mean, if we were talking, if we were looking at this from the perspective of just like political points and policy, Biden wouldn't have had to step down, and it wouldn't have been a, a question because Biden's policies from like the labor, economic, and in certain situations of social have been relatively stellar. The only downsides, the only things that I can think that are negative about that are negative about were negative about his presidency for the last four years, most left wing president in my lifetime, was he continued Donald Trump's uh, border policies in terms of like, you know, internment camps at the border and uh, his enablement of uh, Israel's genocide of Gaza. Uh, in Palestinians, so those yeah. are the, the, so it's like I, he's, I think he's he's eighty percent I, which is still better than like every other fucking president we've had so far. I, I just want to say I think the reason that he had to step down is because it's not the eighties anymore. You can't Ronald Reagan it. You really can't. No. If people have eyes and ears and social media, you know the big difference between now and the eighties. Uh, I would definitely say that, uh, yeah, having a brain dead president, no matter how good their policies are, it just won't bode well for the American public, especially when people are telling the American public, this is the threat to democracy. Yeah, <laughs> um, I'm worried about some of the labor victories we've gotten with Kamala as a potential president, just because, again, she's a fucking cop and she's a shit Oh. 
Well, if you guys could still hear me, uh, I agree. Evan, yeah, I'm really sorry about that snafu, everyone. My computer just randomly had a stroke. I don't know what happened. It just got was weird. But what were you saying? I believe you were talking about how Carmela was a shit lib, and then you cut out. So Carmela's a shit lib. She, you know, I don't know how um, the labor victories and the economic victories and the and the more left wing, you know, economic changes that Biden has done are going to. I don't know if they'll survive under her presidency. Unfortunately, I think I, I'm worried that she. Because here's the thing: to Biden's credit, he was always. Like, especially later in life, he was very much more on, like, recognizing, hey, we got to throw a fucking bow to, to the work, to, like, the middle and lower classes. You know, he was very much, like, which, you know, he was very much, he, he's no Bernie Sanders, obviously, but, you know. But he was doing it as best he could do with, like, a corporate, not necessarily corporate, but corporate Democrat-ism in that framework you he know? was about as far he was about he was almost not a corporate democrat you know what i mean he was just like a hair's breadth away like he was always just off being based he was based mm -hmm. in a lot of shit but there was just like he was all the, the vibe was always just like one dope thing away from being cool and I think especially with the last three weeks with all the interviews he's been doing since the debate, if he came off more charismatic than narcissistic, I feel like he would have never stepped down. But a lot of the interviews and a lot of the reaction to the interviews, Democrats included, have been he's being way too narcissistic and acting like he's the only one who could do this. And realistically, he just doesn't have the sauce like that. He did have the sauce in the past. I don't know. If, I, I don't know why they've been giving him the long-lasting adrenochrome instead of the fast-acting adrenochrome. If this was 2016, but, if this was 2016, Biden versus Trump, I, without a doubt, Biden would have took it. And 2020, yeah. the same uh, results would have happened. I just don't understand why they really, really fucking tried so hard to shoehorn Clinton into this whole thing. Like, <laughs> it's so I, funny. I think it was because Hillary Clinton had paid her dues she had made all her friends and she was like i want the presidency and enough party bigwigs were like okay you can have it and they threw her they threw their back behind her you know it's it's uh, obama won obama won because he was just the more popular candidate he j he was just the more popular candidate if obama didn't run in o in 08 hillary clinton probably would have won the democratic uh primary I mean, the Democratic probably. primary, and probably won the presidency. It's just she... Um, against McCain? Yeah, probably. Yeah. like And and, and, and she probably would have won against Romney, too. Because that 47% comment sunk his fucking campaign. But, mm -hmm. you know, I digress. Um, I think, ultimately... Yeah. Uh, I'm... I... Do, do you I, feel... Uh, this is just what I want to ask. Do you feel as confident about Carmela? Or more confident about Carmela than you did about Biden? I don't know. Okay. Because when I, before the first, that first debate, I was confident with Biden because we had not seen him be, you know, an issue. Like he, his policies were good. He talked good. When he came out, usually he was like on his shit. His State of the Union address was a really great example of that. Um, he was good. And like, every reporter that was close to him was literally saying, oh, he's perfect. He, he's so sassy and, and he's attentive. And, and, and he talks shit. He talks yeah. shit like a dude from the Northeast, which I like, which I like. You know what I mean? Like we're Northeast guys. Like, like, like that like, isn't like, Trump. <laughs> that, yeah, like, you, you know, exactly. So it's like, he, he's a smarmy dickhead, but like in a way, but in a way that like has, he has policies and in, in a way that we like are find more amenable. He's got good policy, he and, 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 like, you know, there's a reason why they've had to make shit up about his economy being shit, about, like, in terms of, like, don't get me wrong, the economy is shit, but it's not his fucking fault. Um, but, you know, it, 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 the repercussions we're dealing with with the economy are, 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 are the result of, of 
Trump's changes to the economy plus COVID accelerating them. Like we would have been seeing tr Trump's change. It's COVID never happened. The issues with the economy that we're currently dealing with, we would have been dealing with about four or five more years from now. But because yeah, like just COVID out. kind of accelerated everything, um, it, 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 it showed how worse it was. And that's part of the reason why Trump had, you know, a good few or a couple early years is because if you actually extend the economy bars and stuff, like from the start of his presidency and you push it back four to five years, you see a large incline starting from the beginning of the Obama presidency to when Trump takes over. So, you know, Trump was not good for the economy. He, he, he inherited a good economy from the Democrat, from a Democrat who, who fixed up the economy after a Republican fucked it up. And he I ran a four billion dollar deficit, which was also a reason for a fucking economy being in the shitter. And mm -hmm. then the COVID. <laughs> yes. And so I think that a lot of the economic things that Biden has done to sort of help with the economy. So uh, are, we're going to see those changes, I think, over the next few years. And um, and if Kamala wins, hope to God she wins. She will be able to hopefully inherit that and not do anything to fuck it up. And the reason why I say that it's going to start getting better is because the CPI, Consumer Price Index, went down some points. Okay. Like That's it went start. it went down for the first time. The Consumer Price Index being the you know like rough level of like how much people are willing to spend and shit. You know, and it shows and it and what it basically shows is is that if people are not spending money, it goes down. And this in turn makes it so businesses like start lowering their prices and shit. And so that shows that, that the greedflation y stuff that's happening, uh companies kept trying to pinch workers and, and, and see how much that the market would bear. They found how much the market would bear, kept pushing, it didn't work, and they brought it back down, and it's like hopefully and will most likely continue to lower if we're lucky so things gotcha. will hopefully get a cheaper with time housing's probably still fucked but that's but it's the housing market we you and i were never going to buy a home anyways uh yeah you're telling me man unless this takes off <laughs> <laughs> listen man this is not my only iron like iron like 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 uh poker in the in the, in the iron of the fire but as far as like no, content's right. concerned, but let's uh, we still got eight, we still got seven and a half minutes before we uh, go yeah, out. let's talk. This so, might be a little um, more contentious, so give, give your spiel on it and tell, tell everybody what happened, like yeah, nonpartisanly, yeah. then give your opinion, and then I'll do mine. So, uh, Tenacious D, great band, Jack Black and Kyle Gass, uh, started in the 80s or 90s, one of the two, uh, 90s. And, 90s yeah that's what i thought and uh you know great movie comedy duo uh fucking great game brutal legends if you ever play it um they are performing in australia on the day that trump gets shot uh the night of the day that he got shot right uh kyle gas's birthday is the night of the performance and jack black does a whole number sings him happy birthday and then brings out a cake he asked Kyle Gass to say, you know, what's your wish, your birthday wish? And obviously he assumed he was going to be like, oh, being here with this many people or my music or something, you know, not what he said. Uh, after to be fair, asked, what he said, I wish he didn't fucking miss, which to be fair, we were all thinking it. Yes, obviously. I, I'm not disagreeing with that at all. However. When you're standing in front of thousands of people, physically standing in front of thousands of people, you got to have a little bit of a filter, like, especially when your buddy is in every major movie ever. He's in Borderlands. He's he's playing Steve in Minecraft. I mean, he's, he's everywhere. He's Kung Fu Panda. He's Kung he Fu was, Panda. Wasn't he also in something else? I can't remember, but he's in everything. So that's like uh, corporate he's like, Jack Black. He's like the the rock tier level of I'm in fucking everything. Literally. And nothing against Jack Black. Fucking hope all the success in the world for him. Like, same, thing with, same, same thing with Gas, but like... Same thing with Gas. So I uh, just want to finish the story. Um, yeah, After that it. happens, uh, they release a statement that Tenacious D is going to cancel their tour and Kyle Gas gets dropped from his talent agency. Now... I want to say, obviously, behavior. 
Obviously, Cowards. Yeah, I mean, this is bullshit. Uh, yeah. Dumb. The whole nine yards. Yes, we agree. You shouldn't have said that shit in front of that big of a but as base. But as consummate professionals, like if we take our own personal feelings out of it, you probably shouldn't be saying that when you've got like when when you're at that fucking level. I'm not saying that you're not right. I'm not saying that I don't agree. But the right wing are fucking crazy, and they and and like they will they 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 will fuck you. Like they're like they're, they're, they will come out in enough. Like there were motherfuckers going out finding like little grandmas and shit at their Home Depot jobs and, and harassing them and shit over like saying like I wish they didn't like saying that or, like talking about I wish they didn't miss Trump's head, you know. And don't get me wrong, I will say I'll be the first person to say here he shouldn't have fucking missed. But you know. No, I, I digress. It's not because I agree with, like, it's not like because I agree with political violence or, or anything. I'm just saying it would probably take a load off <laughs> for me anxiety-wise if, you know, Trump's ass is dead. Uh, but, you know, I don't know. I, I don't think, I, I don't advocate for the, that violence. I don't think it's a good idea. I don't want the Secret Service to come visit me at my house at 2 o'clock in the morning. Um, so all of this is in Minecraft. Um, so in, in, yeah, I just I want to I want to call this out because I feel like a lot of people might have this perspective, but nobody seems to really be saying it on a grand scale. Not that we're a grand scale. <laughs> yeah, but, go uh, for it. Uh, what's it called? The inconsistency of political violence on the left versus the right is just straight up wrong. If you can, yeah, I you, understand. You remember that Nancy it, Pelosi's husband with the hammer? And, uh, and let, everybody talking about that shit. For a second, right? I think we all can agree. What do you remember? What Kathy Griffin did in leading into 2016, holding up Trump's uh, severed head. I think yeah. we can agree that it that is cringe. a step too far. That's eh. too far, right? It's it's. I think I think I think I agree that like saying that like if you're yo, a random fucking person. Let me let me clarify. Yeah. If you're a random fucking person, less than. Uh, a million subscribers on YouTube, what the fuck ever, you're a rando, sure. Say what you want, do what you want. But if you're an actual celebrity in the celebrity world... I, I wouldn't have, even I wouldn't even call Kathy Griffin. Like, I, I don't fucking like Kathy Griffin. I'm saying you got an agent, you're a part of a talent agency, you got people that need to do your PR. Shut the fuck up. It's not in your best interest. Yeah. <laughs> don't, don't, like, don't get me wrong. Like, you can absolutely opine on politics. That's your God-given right as an American to waffle on and on about talk politics. as much shit as you want. Exactly. Obviously. Like, literally, podcasts exist so mediocre white men can talk about bullshit on the daily for no fucking reason. And I know that because I put out a daily fucking news podcast that I cover a news story and talk about my opinion. I am the def textbook definition of mediocre. But I digress. At the end of the day, like, if I do agree. That while I agree with her message, and I agree with the sentiment, I do the think is fucked. <laughs> I, I do I do think that like from a professionalism standpoint, not in the sense of like it's art, go for it. I don't give a fuck. Who gives a shit? Um, two things. One, kind of kind of like rough to do if you're like got, if you've got people that depend on you having getting paid work. But the second thing I will say, I think that. The, I think that the the difference between I think that political violence is actually like when like you know there might be some extremes like the Kathy Griffin stuff or you know things of that nature. Or no, like, no, no, no. Let I also want to clarify this. I'm not saying rhetoric is comparable to political violence. Yeah, it All is. The, it is the is, right wing in this country that actually carries out real political violence based off of rhetoric. And I think that's kind of what I'm commenting on. Like everybody, right. left wing right. people do not hear rhetoric from you know pundits and politicians, and then go out and execute that rhetoric. Right wing people hear rhetoric from right wing pundits and politicians, and they do go do that. The and obviously, thing. not every single fucking uh, conservative is going to go out and kill somebody, but obviously. there is obviously a percentage higher on one side of this issue than the other. No, I would, I would even argue that if you look at the numbers of like political, like, 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 ma uh, like the number of mass shootings that happen, like just if you just look at mass shootings in general, the number of people 
who had a who uh, the political alignment of mass shooters over 90 percent of which skew right no no, no i know Without specific specific and when you just include when you only when you only account for political mo politically motivated violence it is less than two percent of, of people that come from a left-wing thing in fact when when yeah. left-wing people do commit what violence what it is usually violence it is usually um self-flagellatory like aaron bushnell the the airman who emoli uh, who did the self-immolation um look what happened with, look what happened with the black panthers that's why liberal based political violence is not a thing in this country <laughs> it's why the kkk <coughs> Although being called a terrorist group by in name only, I guess, can still fucking gather in this country. <laughs> yeah. Like it's legitimately illegal. It's crazy. Yeah. So you have, you have, you have to you, you have to remember you have to remember that you know you know and even uh, you know Destiny that fucks even said it himself. You know he got banned and shit off of all types of streaming platforms because he said he was glad that you know you know. He wished Trump had got had had got killed, and he went and he did doesn't care that like MAGA, MAGA tards like died in the audience. And he said, "That's wrong." Well, he, here's the thing: Have you fuck you, all that? See, no, no, no. you you say <laughs> you, that, no, no. But then Hold you on. see, you wanna... no, no. I want to be very clear. I don't agree. Ah. I don't agree with the harshness there. But I do want to say for the record that you want to know the type like I, the people are like lion like 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 lionizing the, the this firefighter dude who got killed. You know you want you know what else though? You should look like let's look at let's after the show, we'll look at his fucking Twitter feed. It was fucking heinous, filled with all of the most hate and and he Hold also on. commented pause. on no, Pelosi's pause, husband pause, getting pause. shot beating the fuck out. Understood. Understated. Uh the whole nine yards, I get you. My only thing is if somebody is contributing to to society in the case of a firefighter that legitimately saves lives say what you want about his political opinion i don't give a fuck that doesn't add or take away necessarily the value of a human life i'm just saying you can't outwardly say that even the people who are getting killed don't fucking matter that i think Fair. my point I, 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 I will say i will say i will say not that defending the man's choices or actions while he, he gets, was alive. <laughs> he gets a lot of leeway from me for being a firefighter. He does get a lot of leeway for me from me being a firefighter. He's still a fascist piece of shit. I'm on disagree. And there. I'm not. And I'm, I'm, and I'm not mourning his death. Oh, I, 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 when, I'm pe just when, saying... when people with those level of heinous beliefs die. I don't necessarily celebrate their death, but I do celebrate their removal from the gene. It, I, I'm honestly hit or miss about this because uh, you know my opinion about political uh, perspective and that above all you else... Dick riding human, you, you dick ride that centrist angle, bro. You do. Uh, and unlike you, I actually believe in moderism. Anyway. Uh, moderism doesn't exist in this country. It's just... Yes, it does. Service just to because, conservative just because the federal government puts it in a binary does not mean that, that it's truly a binary. Fuck all that. Anyway because <laughs> there's so much gray my nigga i mean first and foremost i also got to say this from this perspective when you are literally born as a gray area racially being in that moderate middle ground whatever you want to call it is my whole identity i'll be so damn real like it, it, it's a perfect example for re, uh bipartisan uh ism right if you are claimed to be not enough of one thing to be on one side and not enough of another thing to be on the other side, where do you see yourself? In the middle. That's the only other place you could possibly be. The, I get you where you're coming from, but the whole notion that you, you know, are what you, you're not a white man, you're not a black man. Both of those because of because of your uh, your your No, 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 no. Not background. that perspective is not on myself. That perspective is what other people perceive of me. That's yeah, why yeah. what that I'm perception saying. that perception both of those on the white side and black side are both rooted in right-wing lenses of social identity. 
you're not seemingly understanding my point on how it equates. I'm saying I'm so, what, you, no, 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 no. I, I get, oh, I understand what you, like how you're trying what you're trying to equate. What I am saying is is that the reason it doesn't equate is because both because the, I think you're missing the point. I'm not saying that black people saying to black people are liberal and white people saying to black people you're not white half black people you're not white enough is conservative i'm saying when you are literally in a gray area when everybody around you is saying politics is black or white you're literally saying to them no 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 no. hold on time out right now everything is being presented to you as black and white red or blue but there genuinely is a purple in this country People who genuinely don't have a, uh, you know, a uh, claim against a trans person's life, but is genuinely like, hey, that's just not what I want to focus on. Or the same thing about any societal issue, the yeah. abortion I, as well. I, I do, I do want to say that's what I'm saying. I hear where you're coming from, but just I want to just correct the record because I got trans friends and shit. I do want to say that most people on the left, all people on the left, don't want to talk about trans issues with trans people and shit. We're not just this year alone. Three hundred and fifty-five bills have been put forward in state houses at different levels of government all across this country to uh, make to restrict the presence of trans people in public, criminalize their existence in different aspects of daily life, and prevent them from getting the drugs and treatment that they need. So hold on, I, just very quickly. I, I, want, I, want, can, I, want, I want to be very clear that the reason if, why we talk about it so much is because the right wing makes it an issue, and we and and you cannot give ground to the, the right point, ever in a when, culture war issue. The point went right over your head again. I'm not saying that the left and the right does this. What I'm trying to say to you is, if we can accept that there are extremists, extreme conservatives that are putting forth these 350 plus bills regarding trans people my point isn't that liberals should stop talking about trans people my point is the moderates of this country are saying genuinely we don't have a feeling regarding it either way let them do what they want to do and there shouldn't be any bills put forward that restricts their access i think that's like the mo would be the moderate view is that fair <laughs> that that here the thing is is, is that that is the the problem is, is is that the trans issue has been because it's been framed by the right wing as either you're against you you're against it or you're for it and you and know, that's why I say that the binary cannot be what people operate under because well, if you assume hold on just very quickly yeah, if yeah. you assume that people are, are either with your existence they stand by your ability to exist or they don't stand by your ability to exist, then yes, there is no middle ground there. But what I keep trying to say to people, I think my point over the course of these almost six months is stop having that perspective because you are being forced into a binary. There is that loud majority that says, I genuinely don't have an opinion on this subject. Either way, let them survive. Don't add any laws that restrict their access. Simple. Right there. But when it is, let me finish. Just when it is presented to you from conservatives that either people agree with your existence or they don't agree and they're going to go out and try and kill you, then yes, obviously, when somebody says, no, I don't have an opinion either way about it, I can understand why you then automatically assume oh, they're just uh, lying to try and save face when in reality, the people are just like, hey, this isn't my issue to worry about. <laughs> Same thing about abortion. I'm a fucking man. Abortion should not be a conversation that I have outside of my personal relationship. But society has made this thing a full-blown conversation with all parties involved. And it's like, hey, realistically, unless I'm facing it in my personal life, I don't really want to hear the word abortion. But yes, I'm aware that conservatives are putting so much emphasis on banning it. And yes, I am aware that some, I'm not saying all, but the extreme positions of both sides that some people are trying to also do extremely late term abortion not really not really that's not a fucking yeah, thing that doesn't exist <laughs> yeah no, that's a problem. yeah it's so like I, past... I, I, just, I, I just want to let you if, if you need emotionally to think that those are there are the centrist positions they're the centrist positions 
I just made the argument that not all conservatives are exactly like I'm saying here, fitting in that binary of they should exist or they shouldn't, or abortion should be fully done or it shouldn't. There used to be a perspective of it's not right for me. And I value that opinion a lot that, hey, uh, you know, the freedom abortion, opinion. here it is. Abortion isn't right for me and my family, but if it happens to you, do what you got to do to sh survive. That used to be the old head perspective, what my grandparents, how my grandparents used to think and shit like that outside of being gay and obviously because of the time. But that return to what I call normalcy, the acceptance, but not being enthusiastic about it is what I always try to, you know, convey. I hope that my position is clear and that nobody feels like I am against their existence. I love you all. <laughs> yeah. And the, the last thing I'll say about that before we move on to the actual like other stuff is, yep. you know, I, I recognize you. Cause I'm like, how do I, how, how do I fucking say this without there it like turning into a whole nother, like you saying it all over again. Cause it's like, do you remember how I said how the right wing sort of like it is such like frames things as an extreme in that those kinds of moderate conservatives don't necessarily, you know, they have don't a have as to much stand on. Yes, I agree yeah. with you. Yeah. So and that's um, why I say like the evolution of what Trumpian Republican Republicanism has become the middle ground of being like, yo, I am not touching this subject. It doesn't affect me. I have no opinion on it either way. Is now seen as either a cop out or you're secretly a conservative and you just don't want to explain your true feelings. And I think I'm just saying if you push people into that, then it does become a binary. And I don't see a lot of so, so, liberals coming out of it. Because here's the thing, like I think what a lot of people think when they ask, they're asked that they're like they ask what is your opinion like like what would you personally do that's not like here's the thing if you if if a person says to me i am personally for my own life pro like wouldn't ever abort a child under any circumstances but i have no reason to tell anybody like how they can, should or should not live their lives and they vote along those lines mm -hmm. and support candidates in their lives along those lines there is nobody short of the of like a you know fourteen year old Marxist Leninist with a sickle and cro a sickle and hammer in their Twitter bio that is going to like be against that like that is you know that being pro choice is means you know you choose what you want for your life and don't shit on it and and don't try to prevent or shame anyone for the choices that they make. Like I think we agree when conservatives try to put forth liberal and what I mean when I mean liberal, I mean the government controlling this aspect of life. When the when conservatives do that, it is immensely unpopular, even with the people who share that opinion. People do not like the government interfering in things in ways that makes their lives worse. And that's a conservative point. Like that is what Republicans used to stand for. Right. <laughs> they've they've got it kind of mixed up now in the sense of, you know, you hate the idea of, hey, you lose your job, you're poor, you don't have any way to like pay your bills. Here's a here's a government subsidy, like a government program for housing, food, and and, and a jobs program. That is looked down upon and, and vilified by the, by conservatives because because of like fucking like the like the Reagan revolution. Meanwhile, they love things like, uh, you know, uh, having God taught to all kids in public schools with with, in, in, with Bible study. They love controlling women's bodies by way of like policing abortion and shit like that. Like they they love um, just. So I'm, I'm. They love, uh, you know, preventing uh, people from being able expressing to, themselves, expressing themselves. Uh, identifying themselves. No, I, I'm with you, and yeah. I think inherently that's why I'm so anti 
anti-current conservative and why I do still claim the moderate uh, position, because I'm like, yo, realistically, there are some things that Republicans could say that would hit nowadays. But God damn it, they're not saying it. Well, that's because, if this was that's the that's 90s or the 80s, it would have been so fucking different. <laughs> that's because of the conservative, the conservative conservatives in this country, like specifically the far right conservatives in the Republican Party, which is just the Republican Party. Um, they, their economic policies are deeply unpopular. Democratic economic policies are more popular. Uh, even like even corporate shitlib democratic economic policies are more popular compared to run on those right the problem is is, is that you know conserve the, the thing is, is that conservatives realize that we can talk about black people better being welfare queens and trans people and gay people grooming children and shit and we can talk about that all day long and then and just elicit feelings of great America, and we don't, and, and then we can just turn around and just fuck them. Now Democrats like will do the same thing; they will fuck us economically in certain aspects. But like you know, you're more likely to get you know welfare spending, even if it's mean tested. You're like you know, it's it the 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 uh, American health like the American Health Care Act, you know, Obamacare, the ACA. Uh, the, um, not healthcare act, uh, the, uh, the uh, American like whatever, um, was a great, like ostensibly like a, not a bad bill. It wasn't single payer, it wasn't a public option, but it was still pretty damn good. And you want to know why so many people in red states don't like it? It's because it's because a bunch of fucking uh, governors for conservative states sued the federal government on whether or not uh, on the fa on not being able to accept having to be forced to accept the money from the federal government and then they could just choose oh no nope, we're not we, and they won that court case at the supreme court and then they chose no we're not going to take the money to subsidize uh the health the health care and then their um, their well, financial books immediately got burdened with these things and then they could point to this and say see that see obamacare is fucking killing our states our state and it's the reason why are, are it's harder to play our federal employees and it's harder why you're not able to get certain things that you need and and they used it as a cudge and, and that was the that was the first linchpin into turning Obamacare which should have been which all sensibly is should be beloved as yeah as close shit. as we'll get to universal health care I will well, just say and, and, and we're uh, not going to because it's been picked apart to such a, a, a degree I will I think we'll end on this just the um i i hope people share in this opinion i hope democrats one day gain the ruthlessness that conservatives seem to have uh because there's definitely a difference in the play <laughs> on the field agreed i want i want democrats to start bullying conservatives calling out their mistresses and shit calling out the fact oh this is this, is this policy that like you did oh you say you're like for uh workers and like you're for workers and unions and stuff didn't you vote on this bill that makes it harder for unions to be able to uh survive and be made and then just like constantly picking them apart like just well i want smarmy bully bully democrats and we and we do get them and sometimes those enough sometimes they they bully sometimes those smarmy dickheads on the democratic side just like on the republicans cheat on their wives like anthony weiner and anthony weiner was dope as shit yeah, he was, but he, he should have kept his dick in his pants. <laughs> he should have kept his dick in his pants. And honestly, in hindsight, if that shit came out today, if he was out like trying he's to... He's also... I just hope you realize, I don't think you understand what you just said here. If Anthony Weiner kept his fucking dick in his pants, Clinton would have won 2016. How do you think? It was his wife who... uh got either arrested no no no. it was his wife's laptop who they found out the information regarding the emails and the dnc about because when he got ar arrested because it was a, about a minor you're they found right out. you're right you're right and this man wait, just kept I, his dick in his pants i didn't know wait i didn't know he texted a minor i think it was a minor because they had a a police investigation something investigation Wait, I thought maybe he, it wasn't a minor, but I, I don't think it was a minor. I think he just t texted a hooker. They investigated him for some reason, and then that was the reason why uh, 
or the wife who was Hillary Clinton's homegirl. I can't remember what position she was in, but yeah, that was the whole reason for that. Because then that's when Comey did the whole fucking thing about her emails and was like, yo, I don't know if we could actually talk, uh, vote for her like a week before the election or what the fuck ever. Yeah. Is it? I'm just noticing the differences between this election and a fucking 2016 one. And it's crazy because it seems like the more bullshit there is, the more Trump wins. Uh, last thing, last point, final point. Go watch the newest episode of The Daily Show with Jon Stewart. He invites Bill O'Reilly on. Fuck Bill O'Reilly, but goddamn if they don't debate amazingly. And they've been de uh, debating for the last 20 years together. So go out and do that. So, um, I just, uh, saw it, um, so he was, in fact, sexting with a 15-year-old girl from North Carolina, I did not know this, Yep. and yep. that was the thing that ended up, like, getting the Hillary Clinton stuff, okay, so you, right? Hey. Thanks and for fact checking me. You're you're good. You were right. I was just like I was like pretty sure like he only texted adult women. Like the youngest. No, because they had to investigate him for them to find out the info on Clinton. But yeah, it's just crazy, you know how simple that shit could happen. Message for all the boys out there choosing to go into politics god bless you if you choose to do that uh keep your dick in your pants i you could change the future right. i've said so much heinous shits about cops that i would not be able to be politic. i believe <laughs> i i dude i do not fucking like cops all right let's get all right let's stop all this hate all this shit and move on to some actual fucking things shall we all right um Let's start with this. Uh, still vaguely political, but in the gaming space, workers at Bethesda Game Studios have fully unionized. As they should. A wall-to-wall -wall union with workers across divisions. They have joined the Communication Workers of America. They say they're the first Microsoft video game studio to form a wall-to-wall -wall union. And a total of 241 workers have signed either an authorization card or indicated they want to join a union through online portal. The wall-to-wall -wall nature of their organization means the CWA will be representing the war of workers across job descriptions and divisions, not just one type, including artists, engineers, programmers, designers. Bethesda is the developer behind Starfield. Uh, we know who they are. Microsoft has already recognized the union. So workers at the studio's Maryland office have officially joined the CWA Locals 2108, while those in the Texas office have become member of the CWA Locals uh, 6215. We're so excited to announce our union as a game studio and join the movements we've across the video industry. This is really good. This, like, this is fucking huge. This is, like, big simply for the reason that Bethesda Game Studios is one of the most valuable video game producers in the industry. Like Between them and Take-Two, yeah. Between them and Take-Two, like, between that, with, like, Take-Two, there's a couple other, like, like, but the Bethesda makes very valuable games on a low on like lower budget teams and shit like they they are like really like they're like there's no like and, and here's the thing because bethesda game studios especially the maryland office is filled with an old guard people that you know have worked like the youngest person there uh, like uh like last i heard had been there like 10 years and he was the youngest person like the, the person worked there the least amount of time these are like the backbone of Skyrim, your Fallouts, uh, Starfields, which let's be real was fucking Todd Howard's pet project, but whatever. Ultimate, ultimately, uh, this is dope. This is really good, and I'm I think this is awesome because uh, I just I it, will just say I wish it does it give them access to like uh, ability to like say yes or no to projects, choose what they want to work on, and shit like that. That would they be are, my only they, other ask. They, they are <laughs> the way the way that you know studios like Bethesda work. They already kind of have that. Like they have the IPs that they're working on. But like for example, the, the there's one dude made the entire Dark Brotherhood quest line mm. for 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 Oblivion. So gotcha. you know it's they they're very yeah, much no, a, that's good. they're very much a 
Now, granted, they're a little more corporate now because of Microsoft and stuff, but what this does is this insulates them from being... What, Randomly from, ousted, like, big layoffs. Like, no, I know. Yeah, they, yeah, they, yeah. They, go Elder exactly... Scroll, they go make Elder Scrolls 6 and then the studio, and then fucking Microsoft fires them and shit like they did the people. Uh, if only Hi Fi fucking Rush's studio, Larian, actually got this. Ah. Uh. <laughs> And and and, I rem- and, I, and and like this is like you know this is uh uh I I think like this is you know because it's wall to wall I think it's like more of a workplace democracy and you know in in this uh, in in this kind of and I think they do have more and they might have more control over um projects being tackled and stuff like that. Um, well, but, yeah. After but, Microsoft, uh, I'm just gonna say this: after Microsoft acquired uh, Activision, I feel like their percentage of the gaming field has definitely gone up so without a doubt we should see more studios try and unionize because otherwise they're going to get an axe to them because if you're not a billion dollar video game like uh call of duty uh you know the big releases every single year dlc for uh i was gonna say uh fucking uh world of warcraft uh, that's not even really that big anymore. I mean, it still is, but you know. I mean, saying. it's it's still the big. I think it's still the biggest MMO in the world. I think still has the most subscribers. It makes, you know, millions of dollars, uh, a, hundreds of millions of dollars a year. It's silly. Yeah, but Look if good. you're not a Call of Duty or a, uh, I'm just using this as an example, uh, GTA or shit like that, mm-hmm. then Xbox Game Studio, especially after acquiring all this shit, is gonna just close you down because you're not you don't put out the same amount of gold that they really need because i think it was like five billion dollars for the activision uh plan they own bethesda so they need to make that money back and microsoft is only like a uh less than 10 percent profit margin so it's not making its money back for microsoft to actually be like yo you got all these game studios uh uh phil spencer do what you want because Phil Spencer, uh, they're also raising the price of uh, Game Pass. I'm not sure if you wanted to talk about that, but the ultimate is going up to like twenty dollars. Yeah, fuck that. The, stand, the standard tier is fifteen, or staying at the same price, but two dollars raised, so twelve. And then uh, they're adding a new tier that gets you day one access to games when they release. So they did this because they're adding Call of Duty Six, Black Ops Six on uh, Game Pass day one. But if you don't have that specific tier, then you can't get it. But I will say, as a PC player like myself, they're not raising the price. So if you do have Game Pass and you have a computer, keep that shit on. Do that. Do that right there. Yeah. Um. I will say. Uh. uh this is Bethesda isn't the first one to uh get you know, the upgrade to, to join the CWA. Um, so in January of last year, uh, 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 300 quality assurance workers at Zenimax Studios. So these are the uh, people that, were, I believe these Play are the through people. the game, get rid of the bugs, things like that. Yeah. Specifically at, at Zenimax, when they say Zenimax Studios, I think they're the, those are the people that work on Elder Scrolls Online and do the QA for them. I think they're also a part of uh, then they might QA for machine games too. Got it. Um, and they and and they uh, at the time uh, formed the largest union in the industry with 300 members. But the QA work QA workers at Activision also unionized with 600 workers. Yeah. So yeah, I so definitely stand. Go ahead. Yeah. So I think I think now that Bobby Kotick is not in charge. Of Activision Blizzard anymore, you know. Even though he got paid that fucking pig. Some, 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 somebody, somebody. Oh, never mind. I'm not going to do a call to violence. Um, I think ultimately, I think now that he's gone and the tactics that he used are gone, and a lot of the fucking shitty managers are gone too. Um, I think there is now going to be a change in like, like now. I think. I wouldn't be surprised with so much going on, like uh, under the former, like the new Microsoft stuff, and all the unionization going on, especially in the wake of the absolutely vicious fucking February and March we had, where just the entire games industry got gutted by like eighteen percent in terms of workers getting the boot. I think that companies not being able to fire. I think that I think that's kind of the big thing about these unions. 
not firing develop people working developing games on a whim. I think forcing companies to keep the people that built these games and made them money on and will and I think it'll lead to a much healthier um I think it'll lead to a much healthier um industry. I think it'll lead to us getting better games because you're not going to have people constantly filtering out of the industry because they're like, fuck it, I just want a stable paycheck. You're going to get people... I think you also won't see a Redfall release because Arcane Studios really didn't want to release a game like that. And... They didn't want to make a game like that. They, they're the, they, made, they made fucking Dishonored and shit. Like, that's not... Yeah, and, yeah. and the continued push from studios to create more uh, games as a service, even though they're like single player developers and shit like that. That was a push uh, from Zenimax originally, and and Redfall was already in the pipeline when was almost almost done when when uh, Microsoft got to it, and Microsoft just said, "Yeah, just fucking put it out as is. We don't give a shit." And they're like, "But it's not done. Like we don't care. Just put it out on Game Pass." And Fallout, believe it or not, Fallout seventy six was actually a uh, a part of that was part of that push from Zenimax's leadership to do uh, online service games. And don't get me wrong, Fallout 76 is now a much better game compared to what it was. It, but it's an arcadey MMO-like, you know, experience. It's still, got, you still got quests and dialogue trees and NPCs and stuff now. It's perfectly fine. It's an enjoyable game. It's no, it's no fucking Fallout 4 by comparison. But, you know, it's fine. It just, you know, it... it whether or not it needed to exist in the first place, I don't think it did. I think, honestly, having, having you know, Bethesda, Texas, just for funsies, make a, you know, Appalachian-based um, Fallout game that's just smaller in scale, I think that would have been, that would have sold gangbusters. I think that would have sold... I think if they released the main, uh, main story fucking Fallout right after the show... They would have been so gangbusters. Well, that wasn't going to happen. Like the, the Fallout really. TV show had been in works for years, and there was no, there was no way we were going to know about it. But to Bethesda's credit, they did hack out some new pre- free Creation Club content and made Creation Club content in Fallout for free. In the aftermath of that, sort of just to throw people a bone. Um, yeah. But yeah, it's a whole fucking thing. Uh, moving on. Yeah, we love that. We love unionization among the game industry because God knows they fucking need it. God knows Mike. My, my, let's ho- let's get developers broadly in fintech, you know, unionized next. Because I wouldn't have lost my job with the twenty four hour notice if that didn't happen. Mm-hmm. Moving on, Mortal Kombat Onslaught shutting down barely a year after release. Good. I got all the Mortal Kombat one rewards I needed from the game. <laughs> <laughs> I will say, I don't know, I don't know what the fuck is going on with Mortal Kombat lately, though, because Mortal Kombat 1 does fucking suck dick. It sucks dick. And it's just because they don't have enough offline single player modes. That's literally it. Yeah. Yeah. Do you feel like Mortal Kombat is kind of a shell of itself? Uh, yes, because... It's amazing to me that they really thought, hey, what does everybody want in their new fighting game? Oh, I got it. A board game-like adventure where every node you walk across is a single fight. You don't get any character intros. You know, the thing that you get using the character over and over and over again, and you get to see it, and it's super customizable. And also, oh, you know what we'll take away? We'll take away the ability to customize different parts of your gear so you could have one thing along with another thing. No, 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 no. We're going to mold it all down and claim that every character only gets one set of gear from here on in. You want to know how you get more? You got to go play that game board mode. Oh, and you want to know the best part about the game board mode? There's no map whatsoever. Good luck. I fucking hate Mortal Kombat 1. It's so trash. And I'm just upset with it because Mortal Kombat 11, the last game in the fucking series, they spent like four out, four years making Mortal Kombat 1, has so many more features compared to Mortal Kombat 1. And it's insane. It's it's legitimately insane. A game, uh, a fighting game, especially if it's based on playing with somebody else in the same room, should not be some bullshit like that. 
you can't even look at the uh, rewards that you're going to get for characters until you get them. And it's like, come on, at least with Mortal Kombat 11, I got to chose the tower based on what uh, gear and rewards I wanted to get. Now I can't get shit. I got to go through the whole entire fight. Hopefully I make it. Because the other thing about this is the modifiers make shit so bullshit. And the only way you can actually level up your character is playing online, which is... I would rather stick my dick in a pencil sharpener than play Mortal Kombat 1 online. It's insane. At least with Mortal Kombat 11, I recognize, hey, I'm trash. I can accept this. Mortal Kombat 1, they changed up with the cameo features. And man, even if you're one hit away from killing your opponent, you will get brought back so fucking quickly. It's insane. The comebacks in that game are insane. Uh, yeah, I'm just not a fan. And I'm not necessarily even talking about game mechanics. Game mechanics themselves, pretty good. Pretty okay. Like it's, but it's just... like like it's it's hard. It's you can fuck up like fighting game mechanics, but like those are usually the first things that they make tight. Yeah. In a fighting game, usually. Because if the fighting game mechanics are shit, it doesn't matter what else you do with the rest of it. You know what Mortal Kombat 1 is giving me the vibe of? What? Dark Tide when it released. Ah. And it's like almost a year after release. And I'm like, can y'all add something to this fucking game? We sh you and I should do a stream where we revisit Dark Tide on PC. I've been getting back into it a little bit. I really wish they would get rid of the fucking RNG, though. That is the one biggest criticism I have about that game. And fuck, if it's insane to get actually good gear. Yeah. Uh, we've only got about uh, four minutes to the hour. Uh, I talked about it at length, but I want to know if you heard about it. Uh, the, the Microsoft outage or whatever it was. The crowd, the crowd specifically. And I, and do, do you know what, like how it happened? Not how it happened, but I know let, that everything let, is based let, off of it. Let me explain it from a developer's point of view. Mm -hmm. Somebody at CrowdStrike, a team, uh, the crowd, the team at CrowdStrike, committed the one of the cardinal sins. They deployed to production on a Friday. Bad juju. What? Bad rancid vibes. What does that mean for the non-developer heads? So what it means is, is that they pushed an update to CrowdStrike soft security software, which is on tens of millions, if not hundreds of millions of PCs all across the world in, in everything from airlines to government health care to government offices to private offices like everything like like it is yeah like no it, i know they it, had a ground planes they had yeah, uh, yeah. health services they they, the they, they pushed an update out before everybody went home for the weekend <laughs> they said ah y'all got it <laughs> you never pushed the production on a friday because you might need somebody to come, you might need the team to troubleshoot shit. You do, you push to production at latest on a Thursday. I think the funniest aspect of this story, uh, I'm just saying this because this is what I remember saying. It was a tweet, and I think it was either Delta or American or one of them. They weren't grounded because they run their service off of Windows 3. Of a Commodore Which is 64. insane. Of a Commodore 64. Literally. I don't think. And they were like, we're good. Well, but here, I don't here, know if it was Delta, but yeah. It was one but, of them. But ultimately, uh, I think it was Southwest. Um, mm. But, um, ulti but ul <laughs> yeah, right. But um, ultimately, um, the biggest thing about it, and here's the insidiousness of this they bricked all of those computers. Mm hmm. Like probably like at least a hundred million piece like PCs or more, hundreds of millions even. And it was a type of brick where like you boot up and immediately crash. You don't get to connect to the internet and catch an up and get get the update. None of that. So what you have to do is you have to boot it in safe boot mode. And nobody and, knows and how to do that shit except the <laughs> IT professionals. So they were having a terrible weekend. And they, you boot it up, and you, uh, with like a thumb drive or a disc, you update it, the drivers, and like and you update it manually. And so, 
then you restart it and it reboots. And what the problem was is that there was a lot of cases where they would fix it. It would reboot and then it would download the bad update again and then immediately crash again. <laughs> so uh, this so so just to make it simple, Friday the 26th, July 2024 was the day every IT support person went. This was our 9-11. <laughs> like and I'm so and you want to know the funniest thing and this is the thing I'll, we can end on I did five separate applications five to CrowdStrike to be a developer at CrowdStrike a month ago and man what I tell you I had two thoughts I'm glad they didn't pick me and I'm like, you know what? Bet y'all wish you picked me so you'd have the help. <laughs> oh, I need a job. Ugh. <laughs> Hear that? <laughs> uh, but yeah, man, that's crazy. I can't believe it was literally just an update. It was an update, and in, in it, it, uh, and, and you must be wondering as to why how's CrowdStrike like all of these on like things like this like. Like, well, CrowdStrike updates Windows doubly so for corporate things and stuff like that to keep things safe. Like, you know, updates older versions of Windows, keeps it going, blah, 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 blah. And, um, you know, corporate entities love working with other corporate entities. That's why they pick Microsoft over, like, that shit. So I think that, you know, who knows? I think ultimately, um, I might be able to get a job in IT support. For, like I'm gonna start looking for IT support jobs. I might be able to get a leg in there. Just saying. With a mass amount of uh, what's it called? What they're looking for, definitely. Yeah. But on that note, um, I do ha now have a pre-recorded outro that tells me all of the things. So we're gonna tell Brian's socials real quick and say our goodbyes. But uh, thank you, everybody, for listening to The Rundown. This is the 20th episode. Somehow we made it here, and I'm happy we did. Uh, if you can follow Brian at no.2brian on YouTube, no.2 underscore Brian on Instagram, and go give him follows and all that. Um, I will, and uh, thank you all for watching. We'll see you next time. Appreciate you. Hey, thanks for watching. If you want to you want to talk to me outside of this video, outside of live streams, or just be a join the community and be a part of it, you can do so at hivmedia.gg slash Discord. Discord link's there. We'd love to have you. And given the financial situation of the economy right now, I know this is a tall ass, but if you have the scratch to, to spare, please consider donating and becoming a supporter at hivmedia.gg slash tip. All of our perks are serviced through our Discord channel, including early access videos, exclusive videos, and more. Your generosity is a blessing, and a dollar a month is a boon to my bank account. Thank you so very much for watching. I appreciate you, and have a great day.